Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. Well, it's uh, the beginning of November. We're getting very close to the holidays now. The last two months or la I should say the last two sessions in the Watercolor Card Club have featured some holiday motifs that I thought you might find helpful to decorate your, your um, holiday decorations, whether they be note cards, tags, um, your homemade DSP or, or uh, designer series papers. So just to give you a quick recap, the Watercolor Card Club is a monthly subscription program. You can you sign up yourself, and you anytime you uh, want to stop, you can go ahead and do that. And you will get a video tutorial. You'll be invited into our private Facebook group where you can meet everybody else and see what everybody else is painting and what they're doing with their paintings. And most importantly, there is a live interactive Zoom class. And, uh, and in that class, you see the lesson, you can ask questions, you can uh, show me your work, you post your work in the Facebook group where uh, I can see it and we can discuss how you can improve it and what's good, what's not so good, and all those things. And it's a lot of fun and it's very comprehensive. Now the last couple of sessions, in preparation of the holidays, I began with the mistletoe, and in this case I used the stamp set called Mistletoe Magic so that the paper crafters out there could use their stamp set and learn some watercolor techniques and how to get started painting a beautiful botanical as you see here. This current session that's going on right now, and the sessions begin on the 16th of the month and they continue until the 15th of the following month. So uh, the current one, which is the October-November, is still open and you can subscribe to that one right up until the 15th of November. And here's an example of the lesson, which is this beautiful sprig of holly that I show you how you can, can paint. Now, I thought it would be fun for the next lesson to talk a little more about design and combining different elements and bringing them together to make something uh, really special. So I have some examples of some past cards that I've done where I've used some of these motifs. So I'm just going to share those with you now. So here is an example of a very sweet and easy to do little watercolor. It features some holly and some uh, balsam boughs and I've got it mounted onto this gold foil which is actually from a candy wrapper. Those of you who know me may know that I like the Ferrara Rochers very much. So there you, there you go, using your um, scraps in your paper crafting designs. Here's another example of just a simple holly bow mounted on a beautiful red mat. And, um, and actually, to, you know, to give you a little bit of a backstory, the way I discovered stamping up products was one year I was making an ornament for one of my gardening clients and I wanted to make a box to put the ornament in as a presentation case and I could not find papers that would do what I wanted them to do. Every time I tried to fold these different cheaper papers I would find they'd crack and, um, and I'd have to start from the beginning again. And so I went searching for fine quality papers and I found Stampin' Up! and that was five and a half years ago 
and ever since then I've stuck with them and that's why when I give my watercolor classes and my paper crafting classes I always recommend that people use the Stamping Up products because of the wonderful quality, the um, coordination, how all the colors go beautifully together, and it's one-stop shopping because you can get your tools, your adhesives, your papers, and a lot more. There are ribbons and embellishments, so all sorts of stuff. If you'd like to learn more, please visit my online store and I will post that link below after I do the live video today, but I digress. <laughs> so anyway, so, so here are a couple of examples of how you might want to use your holly sprigs. And I've got one more thing to show you. So that ornament that I mentioned that I was creating for my client featured a beautiful little chickadee. And here is an example of a little chickadee that I painted just perched on this cute sprig of holly. And it's just so sweet. So I thought it would be fun today to do a quick little painting of a chickadee and that I would share that with you. And I'm going to check my settings. I want to make sure you can see and hear me. That looks good. It looks like we're live. Okay, and Kelly, good morning, Kelly. Always great to see you here. And I'm also going to pull up, I'm just going to go online and find a little picture of a chickadee that I can work from. And I'm not going to make this very long. This is going to be a, a pretty short demonstration. I have a piece of 90 pound watercolor paper here. And I'm just going to tear that down to size. I'm going to keep this small because I want to be able to use this on a note card, I think. Or maybe I will make another ornament. I don't know, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay, so there's my paper. And I'm going to do just a little sketch to get started. So I've got a number two pencil and I will bring you down a little bit closer. So there he is. With his cute little beak and this bright eye. Got a kind of a puffy puffy head. It's probably chilly out. Oh my gosh, it was so cold last night. We had freezing temperatures. And um, I think it's time to start the fire. Maybe not, maybe not today, but maybe tonight I'll get the uh, fire burning. All right, so I'm not, I'm not uh, getting too carried away with the details here. I just want to sort of map out where my chickadees legs and feet are. I want to see the direction that the wing is going in. The cute tail. And get that little shape on the end of the tail. And then I just want to indicate where where his markings are. So he's got like a little black throat patch, looks like a little beard. And then, um, of course, they're called the black capped chickadees, right? That's their full name. So I want to make sure I get the, the black cap on there. And it's very important to pay attention to your bird's beaks, because every bird species has a has a different unique beak that has been evolved to be the perfect tool for helping them to extract all the seeds or nuts or the woodpecker is able to um, peck holes in the trees so you want to you want to pay particular attention to all those little details 
Okay, so I think that's sufficient. So there he is. Now for my watercolors, I have three colors. So I'm using yellow, red, and blue. I like to keep it simple because I think it's important for my students to learn all the color mixtures and it's far more advantageous for you to be able to mix your colors than to buy you know dozens and dozens of different colors. So I'm just going to mix together. I also actually that today I'm going to use a little bit of my burnt umber so I'm going to add a fourth color today so I can get this nice rich dark. But before we get to the darks, I want to I want to start with with a light light wash. So I'm just mixing up. I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm just mixing together what's on my palette here until I get a nice sort of a uh, neutral tone, sort of a a grayish brownish tone. Now the chickadee's feathers on his belly have a little bit of a warmer cast so for that area I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to the mixture. Okay so here we go. I'm just going to begin with a very light wash. And I want to stay out of this area here because that's where my the lightest light is going to be. They have that pretty little white on the sides of their faces. Let me bring you down a tiny bit more. All right, so there's the first wash, very easy. I'm just going to add a little more color to some of these areas that are darker. Staying away from the eye for now because I want to preserve that highlight in there. So there's there's the first wash, and I can also put a little bit of a tone on these legs. Feet. This leg got a little bit too fat. Let's make that thinner. That's better. <clears throat> okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of drawing with the brush. And the paper is quite damp right now, so I'm not going to be able to get too fine a detail, but I can get it started. So we'll let that get set up. And while that's drying, I'm going to mix a little bit of green with my yellow and blue. And I'm just going to get a little more paint on here. I'm just going to indicate some, some kind of holly leaves in the background. One of the things I'm going to be talking about in the next session of the Watercolor Card Club is about um, designing. And um, many of you know that I spent many years as a card greeting card designer. And so I did a fair share of Christmas cards <laughs> over my career. So um, actually, it might, be, it might be fun to see if I could find some of those to share them with you. I'll have to go searching into the archives. But um, there's a, an old adage that um, you can paint a good painting, 
but without a design, a good design, it's not going to be good or as good as a painting that's not painted so well, but has a very good design. So we want to get, we want to make sure that we pay attention to some of the design essentials when we're working on our compositions. All right, so he's coming along. Get those points, those distinctive little points on my holly leaves. And let's get some let's get some red berries. Gotta have our, our red berries. So I'm taking my red and I'm just adding a little bit of yellow to it to warm it up a tiny bit. And just scatter a few of these around. So do I want another one in here? Maybe we'll put one right here. Okay, so there's my beginning. And my chickadee's still kind of damp, but I'm going to forge ahead anyway and see if I can put a stroke on there that'll hold its edges. So let's just see. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. The chickadees have started uh, coming coming back to Dandelion Cottage looking for their feeders, but I haven't put them out yet. It's been has not been cold enough for the uh, the bear, all the bears, to be in hibernation. So I'm holding off on putting out the bird seed too soon, because for one reason. I really like my feeders and the bears are so strong that one little claw can get stuck in a feeder and destroy it in about two seconds flat. And then the other thing is that my feeders are um, just outside my window and every time the, the bear comes he puts his claw right through my window screen and he doesn't even know he's doing it. I mean they're just so they're just so gigantic and strong, and um, they're kind of clumsy with their with their claws. At least when it comes to the feeders and the window screens, I'm sure that when they want to be careful, they have the uh, ability to to do so. 
So I'm just increasing my color a little bit. There we go. And go back to my my beautiful neutral grays to begin to model the form a little bit. And I talk about all these different things. I talk about perspective and value, color mixing, temperature, all the all the different elements that go into creating a, a picture in um, in each of the lessons. And if you're if you'd like to learn more about the watercolor card club, I will also put the link below of how you can uh, go to the page and read read all about it. It includes a card kit, so you get a card kit mailed to you that will give you enough supplies to make four different note cards, and you get a um, a colored mat with that. You get the watercolor paper and you also get, most importantly, you get your practice paper so that you can, um, at your leisure, take your time and, and watch the tutorial and follow right along with me. I'm just slowly building up chickadee here. I'm mixing a, a darker mixture now. I'm getting into my darker values. And I'm just going to pay attention to the way his beard goes. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Time for a <clears throat> sip of coffee. I hope everybody has your coffee with you today. It's a little bit too damp in here to get very fine lines but I can start to indicate these areas where the where they'll be. And I'm going to put a little bit of a accent on the end of his tail, a little shadow under his wing here. And I'll just put a little bit of texture, just indicate some texture on the legs, the feet. Now, I'm going to put, I think we need a little um, branch or something for our friend to be sitting on, so I'll just add that like so, and just sort of let that trail off. All right, I'm not going to get too carried away with 
the um, painting because I'm probably going to end up tearing this down and turning it into something else so it doesn't have to be a masterpiece. So we'll just give these holly leaves a little more color. Alright, now I want to, um, I just want to do a little experiment while I have my paints out. I'm going to grab a, let's see, let's see if I've got my scraps here. Let me see if I can find a little piece of watercolor paper. Here's one. <clears throat> I want to see what happens if. If I were to paint a little bit of holly, All right, so there's some holly leaves. I want to try this stuff. This is called Pearlized Enamel Effects. And it's a package, I haven't tried it yet. It comes three to a pack. So we've got a kind of a pearl colored, sort of an ear, let's see what it says. Sort of a pearl, like it says, pearlized effect. So I don't know if the camera can show you that but it does have a very beautiful luster the way a pearl does i want to try it comes in a pack with red white and black the black actually looks more like a dark gray and um i don't know if you have to shape this or not i haven't used it yet so let's just see what happens i know it takes a couple of hours to dry but let's just see what What we can do with this. This could be a lot of fun. Oh yes. Well I can see some potential here. I'm gonna put that aside to dry and um, and then figure out what else I can do with it. Now here's something interesting. So I can see where the um, where that leaf was was still moist. I can see that that berry is running a little bit around the edges. So I guess if you want to have it popped up and three dimensional like that, you want to make sure that you're putting it on a nice dry surface. But having said that, if you do want a kind of a softer oops. I bump it a little bit. Um, if you do want a kind of a softer slope, you can experiment putting it on a slightly damp surface and you might get a different effect. All right, so, so we will put that aside and let it dry and see what happens. So that's the show for today, folks. 
here's my little chickadee. He's not quite finished yet. I'll finish that off camera. It's it's a little bit hard for me to get my head close enough to see all the detail because of the camera in the way. But um, but you get the idea. If you're interested in the Watercolor Card Club, please go to my website at dandeliancottagedesign.com and look for the Watercolor Card Club. All the information is there and you will be able to subscribe in time to learn to paint the holly. Okay, and that, that is only until the 15th of November and then we're going to do a different subject. If you enjoyed this program, please like and subscribe. I'm getting very close to uh, hitting a, a big number here on my Facebook page. And, um, and when you do follow me, you'll be notified of when I go live here and, uh, and you're welcome to join me. Stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.